Hey guys, Gary here, back with another video quick. This time I thought let's revisit Framer X because it's now been out for a little bit. If you remember in my last video on Framer X, I was less than complimentary, right? Where essentially going into this, my view of Framer X when it first came out was that it's an interesting idea. It lost a lot of the uniqueness of Framer Classic and a lot of things that I love about Framer Classic to become more of a sketch plus clone that didn't really hit any of the marks for me. That's the short version. Now I've kept a, an eye on Framer X. I've had my team use Framer X. I've played around with Framer X. This whole time we're, we're, we're keeping our eyes on it. And here's my current viewpoint on it. Framer X still has a ton of potential, but it's not ready yet. So what I mean by that is when we're using it, so for context right now, we're using it on a large project that has a couple hundred screens. It's an enterprise app, um, you know, so business critical stuff. And as we're working on the prototype, as we're getting to scale, the program is slowing down, which is a problem. But functionally wise, it's a lot less clear how to do things. So for example, having where you click a button to increment uh, a text value, you know, quantity, for example, up increase, down, decrease. I'm sure there's a way to do it with code overrides and uh, you know things of that nature, but it's not as intuitive or simple as it was in Classic with just TypeScript. And so what we end up having to do, because we, quite frankly, the learning curve is a little bit too steep where we don't have time uh, just for the sake of playing with it to go, okay, how can we find every little niche and make this work? So what we end up doing is making multiple screens to show the up and down, which is cumbersome, it slows everything down. So that's not really a good thing. Uh, the next thing I'll talk about is, I've said this from the beginning, one of the things that made Framer Classic unique and special to me was being able to see code for the entire prototype in one place so that I could write for loops, I could easily manipulate things. And you still don't have that in Framer Classic. Yes, you have code components, yes, you have overrides and you know it's kind of this meshing of the two which I'm starting to wrap my head around you know and see the value of it but again it's not quite there yet which is a problem and the new update they pushed out which has a code editor I was really excited for because like yes we're finally getting that view of code the entire you know for the prototype in one place and that's not what this is the it's basically VS code slimmed down built into the tool so you don't have to have VS code installed which to me, it's like, who cares, right? Installing VS Code wasn't the problem. The problem was not seeing all of your code in one unified source, at least to me and my team, right? Again, take it with a grain of salt. This is just purely my team's perspective. So where my guys are at currently? Uh, well, actually, the last, the last thing I'll say is a problem with Framer X is the, there is no easy handoff of design specs to the engineers. And yes, you're gonna say, but 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 if you write it as React components, you can hand off the exact code and like, yes, but what if you don't use React, right? So my guys, we write in either Xamarin or Java, you know, for doing Android applications, Xamarin for cross-platform, right? Because we're not doing React, we can't use that, so that has no value to my team. So when we go to do the handoff, what I'm told is we'll just hand it off and have them use the inspector. Uh, you know, in like Chrome, and it's like, okay, that kind of works, but it's not the same as having a sketch file that plugs into Zeppelin or Envision or, you know, any of the other multitude out there that let you do redlining with exporting and everything like it. So a handoff to the devs just isn't there unless you're in the React flow and that's all your company does. If you're in React, then it's probably gonna be a great fit. If you're in anything other than React, which is the vast majority of the industry right now, it's not gonna do it for you. So don't get me wrong, there are a lot of good things about Framer X. Like I do love how simple it is to go through things and I love the community around it. And I, you know, I love the potential that Code Overrides has. For example, we needed to add um, sound as an interaction where when you click a button, you know, it plays a tone. Uh, you know, positive or negative type thing. We asked a question to the community. Within a day, somebody had written a sample project that used uh, a project from uh, called Howler, you know, that we installed through NPM, right? And we got it working, so we have a code override, which is really convenient, 
where on the button we just click this is going to be audio and it's going to be positive or negative. So that part of it's great, but it's still a little bit obtuse. Like it'd be amazing to just have built into Framer because sound is such an important part of what we do, where when you write something that it could play it directly without having to write this code override and then you know not be able to choose. So I mean, I digress, I digress. But the point being, there's a lot of good things about Framer X. I do really like it for just doing really quick, simple prototypes. Um, you know, it exports as a web view uh, or exports as a, a folder, which we then drop into an Android Studio project, uh, compile it as an APK and can install it on devices for testing, which is nice. But just in general, Framer X still isn't there yet. It still shows tons of potential. It still, I think, could be there. But until it expands beyond the bubble that is React, uh, to add value to other workflows, I think it's always going to be limited. So there you have it, guys. That's my thoughts uh, as a design practice lead. Who you know we've messed around with Framer, Sketch, um, you know Axur, Figma, Marvel, Envision, you know Framer Classic, right? Pretty much any any tool. Oh, Adobe XD is the other one that we're looking at right now. Um, and XD shows a lot of potential. Like I'm. XD has me very, very curious where they're going to go with it. I think eventually XD is going to be probably the biggest competitor to Sketch. And, you know, because of Adobe's reach, I think it has potential to overtake Sketch given, you know, if they, if they take the right steps. But anyway, that's a different, different video, different story. Point being, FramerX, if it fits your workflow, is a fantastic tool. Kudos to the team for what they're doing. I think, though, business-wise, they are narrowing themselves to such a small niche in design and development that it's going to hamper their growth going forward. Um, so my recommendation to them, they're probably working on this, is find a way to expand beyond just React because it limits you. Anyway, with that being said, thanks guys for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.